What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, as most of you know, I do have a race ship in my car. And this is going to be like my take on the race ship. Do I think it's good? Is it good value for money? Would I recommend you buying a race ship? Because I, like I, I bought mine second hand. So for me, the price wasn't that bad. It was actually quite good. But if you buy it brand new, is it actually worth it? Because that's the thing. So it depends on what you actually want, whether you should buy a race ship or not. And that's what I'm going to go into now. Okay, cool. So firstly, let's talk about my experience with the race ship. I've actually had quite a good experience. Um, the install is super easy. It's crazy easy. Um, I can show a quick clip of me installing the race ship because I did that myself. Um, you can remove it really easy as well. So if for whatever reason you need to take it out, it's really not a hard job. You, you just take it out. It's like five minutes in and out. The thing is, it's super easy. So if you're looking for something that's just super quick plug and play, you can go to the shop or to a car shop thing. You can go to a tuner shop and just buy a race chip, plug it in and it's eight far away. So, well, you have to buy it for your specific car, but you get the point. You just go to a race chip dealer, you buy it for your car, you plug it in and you go in. That's it. There's nothing more to it. It's really quite easy. So if that's what you're looking for, just a quick way of getting more power. The race chip's fine. Only problem is the price, but it's it's easy at least. Um, but for my problem comes when you're actually looking for the best way to get more power. Because the race chip... The cheapest model is $250. I've got the $350 one, and then you get a $500, but it's actually $600 normally, but it's on, currently on special. Um, I mean, even mine, $350 US dollars is a lot of money. For that, that's a lot of money for a chip that is only like, because it, the way the ratio chip works is it's got like a base map for a 335. So it's got it, it should work on all 335s, or all, all Golf GTI. So it's not like specifically for your car, it's for your model. So that's the problem with it. It's not tuned per car, it's tuned per model. Which means it's not going to give you the top best. I mean, I think they say something like 65 horsepower, 70 horsepower gain on my car. I know for a fact, it's not, nothing else, just the tune. You can get more than, a, well, a little bit like 101 horsepower out of this engine extra without doing anything except the tune, just the tune. If you've got a good tuner, you can get 100 horsepower extra on the N54 335. So it's not as good if you're just looking at the power standpoint. And even on the top of the range, I mean, if you look at the top of the range race chip, that's 600 USD. That's a shit ton of money. You can buy a JB4, which is a lot better because in the JB4, you've got a learning map, you've got the same idea of maps that's like a base map for the model and then you've got e empty maps that you can actually load a custom tune on the empty maps and you can monitor all of your jazz and shit and kakas on the JB4 so the JB4 is much better for the same price as the, uh, the top of the range race chip so I would stay away from the race chip top of the range one the GTS but the, the cheapest race chip is okay because it's not that expensive it's really quite cheap I think it's $250 which is in like 3,000 Rand, that's not too bad. That one is good, because I, well, you get a bit less power than without the two, but it's still okay. And you can change the settings on the race chip. I've got a video, I'll link it. You can see that to get more power after, out of the race chip. So if you've got a cheap race chip, you can still set the power a bit. You've got a few change changeable settings on the cheaper ones, if you don't have the one with the phone. Because the GTS, you can just change it on the fly, but with the other two, you actually have to open the race chip. I've got a video about to do it. Go check it out. Anyways, JB4, I would rather buy if I had $500 or whatever in Rand. I think in South Africa, the JB4 is around 10k. It's 10,000 Rand. So it's a shy ton of money. It's a lot of money because you have to buy it in US, which is much stronger than Rand. And then you've got to import it to South Africa. So they are quite expensive, yeah? But if I had the money, I would rather buy the, the JB4. So, but anyways, I digress. So the race chip, as I said, let's say you've got a budget of $500. Né? That's your tuning, because I know you can do a custom tune for around $500 on your car as well. So should you rather get a custom tune, buy a JB4, because the JB4 is 480 USD, $480, or get the race chip for $500? Personally, I would either get the custom tune on the JB4. I think JB4 first, and then the custom tune on the JB4. So it will cost you more, but then you've got both, best of both with best. But then you've got best of both worlds. So you've got the JB4 for all the monitoring and the cool map 
maps and the learning map and all of that jazz and then you've got the custom map on top of that which is quite cool whereas the race trip is like it's plug and play uh, if you upgrade the card it doesn't even matter because you've done the software it doesn't adjust to the upgrades you do it's just one and done that's the software that's it it's quite boring actually so if you enjoyed the video please leave a like and subscribe to my youtube channel um i've got more car related videos coming I'm gonna do a review of my tiny little Renault 5 as well soon it's just a little broken at the moment so i'm gonna fix it and then i'm gonna do a review on it okay cool check you in the next one cheers cheers